Hey guys, welcome back to Home with Theater Gurus. This is episode four. So the last episode we went over Atmos and we placed our speakers. In this episode, I said we were gonna go over down firing uh, Atmos speakers and ceiling down firing speakers. But before we do that, uh, we need to kind of hit on what makes a speaker, measurements wise, what makes a speaker a good speaker versus a bad speaker. And if we remember, Dolby, stated that uh, the overhead speaker should complement the frequency response output and power handling capabilities of the listener level speakers. So we're gonna kinda key in on frequency response. So <clears throat> you see here we have a uh, popular DIY speaker, the HTM12, and also uh, JBL has some really, really nice speakers. Uh, here's a 308 similar in uh, waveguide technology to the M2, which is pretty much reference for uh, studios and things like that. It's a very, very nice speaker. Extremely well designed. But before we hit that, we're gonna explain how to read these graphs. So when you look at the graph, you're gonna have a bottom and a left side that has numbers on it. Now on the bottom, you're gonna have your frequency and it's gonna be whatever they're measuring. So for subs, you know, down on the left, it may go to 20 and on the right, you know, that's going up in frequency, it may go to 120, whatever they're measuring. So for loudspeakers, usually, you know, it may say 20 hertz on the left. And on the right, usually they go to 20K or 20,000 hertz. So we'll put 20K. And between those two points, you're going to have lines that are drawn. Sometimes they're an octave apart. But anyway, uh, so that's going to be our frequency response, left to right. Remember, as you go right, you're going higher in frequency. Now on this side over here, you're gonna have your output or your sound pressure level. So it's not really too important how loud that is. What's important is how linear it is. Let's say measurement, let's see with this HTM12 here. So it was measured around, say 73 dB. So it's got 70, 75. Now these are five dB increments, which is pretty standard. Sometimes you may see a speaker and it'll have 10 dB increments. Now if that happens, what they're doing is panning out. And so they're making the little squiggly lines look smoother. So that's kind of a red flag. If they're shown in 10 dB increments, you really want to see five because it really zooms in so you can see what's going on. So on axis is taken usually three feet in front of the speaker. And it's a measurement, you know, usually done hopefully where there's no reflections. Now there are things you can do to kind of strip the reflections away if the measurements are taken in a room, but usually it's done like out in a field or in a chamber where there's no reflections. So three feet in front of the speaker, you're gonna have your, whatever their target is, like whatever, however they design the speaker, usually it's gonna be flat. Sometimes a manufacturer will kind of have their own sound. They may have a little more bloated bass or a little more emphasis on the bass or, you know, somewhere else in the frequency response. You know, that's okay. That's uh, as long as they're hitting their target and their response is smooth. So let's say they're going for a linear or a flat response. Okay, and that's pretty much with this HTM12. You know, if you look at it, it's pretty darn flat. So it's an accurate speaker. So... You're gonna hear like a 20 hertz to 20K plus or minus three dB. Now what that means is whatever their target was, whether it was flat or maybe their target had a little hump here, you know, in the base area, that plus or minus means that they don't deviate more than plus three dB up and then the minus is down three dB. So it gives them a window. So they're basically saying that for that entire frequency response, they're staying in that window. Now, if they say that it's plus or minus 3 dB for 40 hertz, that means around 40 hertz, they began losing output and they lost, you know, uh, it was falling down. The same thing on the upper end. If they only made it to 18K, that means past that they were dropping. So that'll, it kind of gives you a, an idea of the frequency response of the speaker. Now, what you don't want to see is, say like this is their target. And so kind of rolls off and that's normal for it to roll off in the base, you know, around the tuning frequency for it's sealed, you know, where it's going to roll off. 
if the speaker, you know, it's going to kind of do this kind of number here. If there's a large drop, even if this is still 3 dB, that's a little more than 3. Let's say it drops down to the 3 dB point and then goes back up to the plus 3 dB point. All of a sudden, you've got a 6 dB swing. See, that's not really good. You know, it's okay for them to kind of fluctuate back and forth a little bit, but you want to kind of, you, you want as small of swings as possible because you will hear 3 dB and especially 6 dB. Now, room correction can fix those for one spot, but if you remember when you're doing room correction, it's around a bubble around your main listening position. So any changes you make to the speaker, you know, especially they could be room anomalies, those changes aren't going to exist at other seats. So you're actually messing the source up. The source is your accurate speaker. So you have to be careful with EQ trying to fix, if it's a bad speaker, you know, trying to fix a bad speaker is not a good idea. And we're going to look at why. Okay, now if you notice the HTM12 here, there's some lines underneath it. That the upper one is going to be the frequency response on axis, and then they're showing you the off axis. And its off axis is really, really nice because it resembles the on axis. So if you've got a speaker and its on axis is like this. Now remember, okay, each one of these is in 10 degree increments, I believe, up to 90. Now, if you notice the, the base frequencies or the lower the frequency goes, we don't, our energy kind of, kind of doesn't get lost. We don't lose a lot of energy, even off axis. We lose some, but not compared to, to the frequencies as you go higher. And the reason is because they're larger. So the larger the frequency, you can afford to go off axis and it's not going to affect it as much. But those upper frequencies really take a dive as you go off axis. So the goal off axis is to resemble the on axis. So as you go off axis, your upper frequencies are slowly going to taper down. You're going to start to lose them, but you want them to resemble the on axis. So those are going to be your room reflections. You know, if you're aimed straight ahead, the off axis, they're going to be hitting the walls of the rooms and that's going to, you're going to get a lot of sound from the room itself. And this is where room treatments come in. You know, some of those reflections are good, especially with good off axis, like uh, this HTM 12. You know, you wouldn't really want to absorb those, you know, reflections in some places because you can use them to make the sound bigger, make the room sound bigger. But if we had some, if we had a speaker where the off axis didn't resemble the on axis, you know, and it starts to drop, then it goes over the, you know, it's just all over the place. It doesn't look anything like the off, the on axis. That's not good. Okay, this speaker would sound harsh because those off-axis reflections don't resemble the on-axis, so it sounds like a different speaker, and the reflections are going to neg negatively influence each other, and it's just not going to sound good. You know, that would be a speaker where you don't have an option but to absorb all the reflections. But then another issue is people sitting off-axis, you know, they're still, they're still hearing something different because the response to their hearing is not what you're hearing on axis. So that would be an example of a poorly designed speaker. You know, speakers that maybe some people think are harsh, you know, you need to look at this because even though, you know, everyone you know, says you have to hear a speaker to really, you know, demo it and know what it sounds like, you can't go by graphs. Well, you can and you need to because you're spending your money on this stuff. So you need to learn how to tell if a speaker, you know, is something you need to put your money invest into. Because while it might sound good in a demo room where you're sitting in a one seat, you know, and they've got you placed on axis and the room is all absorption, they can hide a lot. You know, and then you get it home and these off axis, you know, that poor off axis is bouncing off the walls and it sounds harsh and it, you're just not happy with it. You know, if you look and ask for this information, you can save yourself a lot of grief. There's a YouTube video by Floyd Tool, and it's about sound reproduction in a room. And he takes, I believe he takes the JBL 308, which has excellent on and off axis. And he puts it against some very, very expensive speakers. And in the sighted test, you know, it's, it doesn't score as well because the placebo effect, you know, whether or not we want to admit it, it is a huge factor. You know, when you see a really nice furniture grade speaker that's just beautiful, 
you know, you expect it to sound as good as it looks. So it didn't do as well in the sighted test. But in the blind test, I mean, it, it held its own with, you know, and beat some of these very, very, very expensive speakers. And he proves that this works. Having good on and off axis, you know, if, if you can get that off axis to really resemble the on axis and have excellent, you know, uh, characteristics, you know, measuring when you measure it, you know, you can use that information and it will every time those speakers are going to score extremely high in blind test. You know, it's not something that's just made up. So use this information because it's your money and you don't want to spend it poorly. That doesn't mean don't demo speakers because like I said, manufacturers will throw in their own little, little spice on top, you know, a little bloated base for a little more kick, you know, but, and that's okay. But you want to see the off axis to make sure that, you know, it's more than just a pretty speaker, that it's got nice responses. So that's going to be how you determine a well-designed speaker versus a speaker that maybe isn't so well-designed that maybe you don't want to put your money into. So don't want to offend anyone who, you know, a lot of people are, you can't go by that. You, you know, listen, 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 you know, forget about the specs and the measurements, uh, but they are important and you can use those. Those are a very, very valuable tool. All right, guys, so that's it for this quick little episode. Next episode, we're going to go into down firing speakers and the pros and cons of using them versus something that you can aim at the main listening position. Some of you probably already have an idea where this is going based on this information here. All right, guys, I'll see you all next time. Thanks.